Okay, thank you very much. Welcome back from the break. I think up to now it has been already a very exciting morning. Uh, from this next session is going to be about current and future targets led by two friends and excellent scientists, Silvia Moon and Antonio Iavaroni. Take it away, guys. Hello, hi. Shall I start with my presentation? Yeah, so um, my name is Sylvia Moon and uh, I'm from Plymouth University, UK, uh, Brain Tumors uh, Research Centre. And uh, my research, our research is focused on NF2, NF2 related tumors, schwannomas and meningiomas. So today I will just talk about three main potential therapeutic targets which we uh, lately uh, discovered could be a good uh, good approach to, to maybe uh, test some uh, drugs for schwannomas and meningiomas. Uh, so what we are doing, we are using primary cells and tissues from uh, patients for from uh, schwannoma and meningioma uh, melin deficient uh, tissues, which we culture, we can use also in vitro uh, primary cell cultures. So we are choosing the, uh, and the targets, we, uh, we, we chose a targets which are especially overexpressed and activated in merely negative tumors comparison to, to normal, healthy, merely positive uh, tissues in the cells and which are regulated by merlin. So main three targets, potential targets, which I'll be talking about today are endogenous retroviral proteins, TAM family receptors, Axel and MRTK, and NF-kappa B. Uh, all those uh, targets we have previously shown uh, and published are of express and activated in both schonoma and meningioma, many negative schonoma and meningioma, and they are involved in the schonoma and meningioma proliferation. Also, there's a potential uh, uh, co-target, which we are currently investigating, is multidrug resistant protein 1, uh, which uh, decreases uh, drug sensitivity and has been previously shown to be overexpressed in, in, in meningioma tissues. Uh, so what, what we are doing here, so we have all these targets and, and our goal is to, to repropose drugs which have been previously used for other indications or which are uh, in clinical trials or uh, if they are approved, uh, if they are approved for other diseases, for other cancers. Uh, so I will start first with uh, and the endogenous retroviruses, which are proteins which are uh, produced by endogenous retroviruses, uh, incorporated in our genome during evolution and uh, a potential. Uh, therapeutic role of uh, antiretroviral drugs, protein, pr uh, protease inhibitors. So we, we found, we have tested uh, three different uh, protease inhibitors previously test, uh, used for HIV treatment, ritonavir, atazanavir, lopinavir, many years known uh, used to treat uh, HIV. And what we found that uh, ritonav uh, ritonavir decreases very, uh, uh, strongly decreases proliferation of schwannoma, primary schwannoma cells in vitro, also patient-derived uh, schwannoma cells, but have no effect on on, on melanin positive normal Schwann cells. So actually, it's it it, it looks it, it's it's uh, too specific. We have also uh, uh, tested atazanavir lipinavir and both decreased proliferation of uh, primary uh, schwannoma cells. All three drugs were very effective in decreasing in proliferation of grade one uh, many negative meningioma cells. Uh, what is important that all these drugs are very effective at very low doses, low doses below semen plasma concentrations observed in, in, in uh, HIV patients, all except of atazanavir in schwannoma. So those, we could say thought ritonavir and, and lopinavir would be good potential drug treatment for both uh, schwannoma and meningioma tumors. Uh, the next target, uh, very uh, two targets uh, actually, which are very interesting are axel and MRTK uh, receptors and uh, which are strongly expressed and activated in both schwannoma and meningioma due to melin deficiency we have tested two different drugs uh, axel inhibitor bgb 
and uh, Metricane inhibitor ONC and its analog MRX. Uh, both BGB and uh, MRX are uh, FDI approved for clinical trials, and uh, BGB uh, 3 to 4 is FDI approved actually to treat acute myeloid leukemia and is well tolerated with few side effects. So what we found here, uh, we treated both uh, schwannoma and meningioma primary cells, patient-derived primary cells. We show that a BGB axial inhibitor strongly inhibits schwannoma proliferation and inhibits meningioma proliferation and uh, induces apoptosis, both in schwannoma and meningioma. Also, uh, uh, the MEDK inhibitor UNC2025 had the same uh, effect, strongly decreased the proliferation of schwannoma and meningioma and increased uh, apoptosis. Uh, what, what is uh, interesting here, as we can see, when we compare schwannoma and meningioma, those drugs are, are much more potent for meningioma than schwannoma, but they are very effective schwannoma as well. And we can see here that in meningioma, there's difference between uh, 72 hours and seven days treatment. The, the following 72, uh, seven days treatment is even more effective, but there's no difference between 72 hours, seven days in, in schwannoma. So uh, uh, we, we, we found that uh, these two drugs are very effective for tumors, and also now we are investigating the involvement of, of uh, uh, microenvironment, macrophages, which also expressed uh, uh, those receptors and which could also contribute to tumor development. So we, we, we are working on uh, also how those drugs could affect not only tumor cells, but also macrophages. Um, the last target uh, is an FKB transcription factor of expressed and activated in both schwannoma and meningioma. We have successfully tested a drug, uh, EDASA, which is uh, an FKB inhibitor, and it's FDI approved for the channel muscular dystrophy treatment in children, and it was shown to be uh, well tolerated. What is interesting that uh, when we use this drug, it strongly decreased proliferation of meningioma cells at the post 72 hours, seven days. Had, at this concentration had almost no effect on, on cell survival of tumor cells. And this, this, the shame that the same the drug was very effective in schwannoma as well, with no effect at this concentration uh, uh, on tumor cell uh, survival, survival. And what is interesting, that the, the, the I see 50 for this drug uh, for both tumor is within I see 50 of plasma concentration used in a DMD patients. So it's it's quite uh, close to, to 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 reality that that, that uh, drug works at, at the level of one drug is effective but not uh, 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 inducing any side effects. Uh, and now there's a question whether uh, or not there would be possible uh, need to, to, to co-treatment of the drugs I've described uh, before or other drugs, co-treatment with a multi-drug uh, resistance uh, inhibitor, uh, Valspodar. Um, we have tested, uh, we have shown that in both Shonoma and meningioma have expressed uh, MDR1, uh, and, and it does uh, display an in, intrinsic uh, 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 drug resistance uh, probability in those tumors. And we have tested uh, Valspodor, which is a, a drug from Novartis. It's an inter intravenous uh, drug, but uh, right now bioavailable formulation uh, is in development, uh, orally bioavailable formulation. So uh, here we show the results. It's a normal nerve, this schwannoma. Uh, 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 tumor tissue, we show that the MDR protein is of expressed schwannoma comparison to normal Schwann cells, Schwann tissues. And also what is interesting, when we treated cells with sorafenib, which is PDG3 receptor inhibitor, uh, here we see that in, in the schwannoma cells treated with sorafenib, we have a decreased uh, cell survival and uh, the same with Valspodar with uh, uh, MDR1 inhibitor as well, but when uh, com combined, when the Valspodar was 
cells were treated 20 minutes in before the soratinib, we see additive uh, additive effect. So the Vospadar, uh, Vospadar uh, increases effectivity, efficiency of soratinib in schwannoma. So uh, conclusions, we have good therapeutic targets. We have Axel uh, and MERTK and uh, drugs which are FDI approved for clinical trials or for other diseases. And we plan and now, one, one, now actually I was sitting and writing grant application for uh, schwannoma uh, treatment in my schwannoma mice models to start, to start with. And also uh, another target is an FKPA B and, and uh, EDASA, uh, FDI, FDA approved as well. Um, and uh, what we plan right now, uh, phase zero clinical trials on antiretroviral drugs, ritonavir and lopinavir, um, either in combination, uh, caletra or ritonavir on its own. Uh, and we are continuing our, our investigation whether or not there would be a, a, a need, or in some patients at least, to, to co inhibit co target uh, multi drug resistant protein one. Thank you very much. Any questions? There are no questions so far, Sylvia. Maybe we can combine uh, questions at the end. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. Be, Antonio, uh, you have some uh, uh, cross talk. Uh, should I start uh, sharing my screen? Yes, please. Yep. Go ahead with this. Go for it. Go for it. Um, just um, remove mine uh, and show. Okay. So first of all, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Annette and the, the whole team uh, at CTF to uh, have uh, given me the opportunity to present our work and discuss uh, um, in particular, as you will see, uh, the uh, opportunities that we are generating in uh, LZTR1 uh, mutant tumors, and of course, uh, for uh, this uh, particular audience, uh, LZTR1 uh, related uh, schwannomatosis. So, a little bit of background uh, we discovered uh, LZTR1 as a novel uh, tumor suppressor gene um, in uh, 2013 in the context of uh, a, a genomic landscape study that we did in uh, uh, GBM in glioblastoma. And uh, as you can see, uh, LZTR1 uh, was recognized from this study as uh, an adapter of cool tree based uh, ubiquity ligases. So, for uh, you, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this particular biological field, uh, this is an essential uh, component of a protein complex that uh, has uh, as its primary function uh, the uh, activity of uh, attaching ubiquitin molecules on uh, substrates uh, that clearly uh, are uh, the crucial uh, questions uh, following the discovery of LZTR1 in order to promote the uh, ubiquitin mediated degradation of uh, these uh, substrates. And uh, following uh, our work in, uh, in GBM, uh, LZTR1 has actually emerged as probably the single most frequent ubiquitin ligase uh, coding gene uh, most frequently mutated across uh, uh, all uh, human tumors. But of course, uh, the uh, uh, initial work of uh, Ludwig Messiaene, um, uh, that uh, uh, after one year uh, from our initial report in GBM, uh, 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 established uh, uh, LZTR1 as an important germline uh, potential tumor suppressor gene in uh, a significant fraction of uh, uh, both familial and sporadic uh, schwannomatosis. Follow-up work uh, has also uh, expanded the role of uh, LZT1 as a, a tumor predisposition gene because, as uh, you may know, uh, LZT1 germline mutations have also been identified 
in uh, Noonan syndrome, in another tumor uh, predisposition syndrome. Um, so the field of uh, uh, the, uh, substrates of lgp one ubiquity like this has been very controversial to say the least, and we don't have time to go into detail, but basically there have been a number of reports uh, suggesting uh, that uh, RAS proteins might be substrates of lgp one and uh, this work has not been validated by following uh, uh, reports, um, as well as by our own work. And uh, here you see uh, our uh, strategy, our pipeline that uh, we have uh, uh, adopted to identify unbiased substrates of LZT1 using three uh, uh, divergent uh, orthogonal screens that uh, have been done to identify both ubiquitin AD proteins in the absence of LZT1, proteins that accumulate in the absence of LZT1, and proteins that, that form direct complexes with the LZT1 protein. And uh, um, these uh, uh, three orthogonal screens, as you can see, have uh, converged on uh, very few uh, proteins. And for the sake of this talk, uh, we are focusing now on uh, EGFR, the receptor for uh, the epidermal growth factor that uh, is actually emerged as the only uh, uh, protein that is in common from the uh, tree screen. Uh, as you can see, the other uh, very uh, exciting proteins are uh, RIT1, that the group of Frank McCormick has also recently identified as a potential substrate of uh, LZT1 in Noonan syndrome, and uh, AXL that uh, Silvia also discussed in uh, the previous talk. So uh, the identification of EGFR and AXL to um, uh, uh, different ubiquity, uh, two different receptor tyrosine kinase proteins that have been reported uh, uh, in previous work to cross talk at multiple levels has been very exciting. And in this study, in this slide, as you can see, uh, uh, we have validated the, the uh, interaction, the direct protein protein interaction of LZTR1 with both EGFR and uh, AXL. Uh, more importantly, when we uh, 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 overexpress LZTR1, or uh, uh, as you see in the bottom part of the slide, we uh, delete the LZTR1 gene, we get the reciprocal uh, effect on uh, uh, both EGFR and uh, AXL. So in the case of LZTR1 overexpression, you have degradation uh, uh, of uh, EGFR and AXL. Conversely, in uh, the case of LZTR1 deletion, something that we can do both genetically and biochemically, you can see that we have an accumulation of both EGFR and AXL. This effect is uh, quite specific because, as you can see, there is really no change on other uh, uh, receptor ubiquity like uh, re uh, receptor uh, um, uh, tyrosine kinase uh, proteins that are uh, of similar families, such as the uh, RB, RB, RB uh, proteins. Uh, so, uh, LZT1 loss is uh, basically resulting in uh, a uh, inappropriate activation of uh, EGFR and uh, AXL uh, signaling. So, normally the uh, um, activation of these receptors by the ligand, by the extracellular ligand, is associated, as you can see, with a uh, rapid degradation of the receptor, and this degradation process is blunted in the absence of LZTR1, an effect that is independent from the particular ligand that is used, because as you can see, very similar effect can be seen also with the low affinity ligand, such as apyl regulin. And the mechanism is uh, suggested by the biochemical function of uh, uh, LZTR1 is uh, through the uh, uh, formation of a ubiquitin chain that, as you can see, can be identified with this laddering, uh, both for uh, EGFR and for uh, AXL. A mechanism that already from the analysis, more, uh, I would say, hardcore biochemical analysis, suggests that 
it uh, uh, is basically targeting this receptor tyrosine kinases to the lysosome, which is the preferred uh, subcellular structure where these receptor tyrosine kinases are destroyed. And here you can see in this uh, uh, additional experiment in LCT1 knockout cells how the uh, uh, EGFR and the uh, uh, deregulated signaling of uh, EGFR is activated in LCT1 knockout cells. Now, uh, what uh, we tried to establish is whether the uh, LCT1 mutations that are normally occurring in patients with schwannomatosis are actually associated with some defects in the ability to degrade these two receptor tyrosine kinases. And in fact, you can see that this is the case. Most of these mutations that we have tested are mutations in the Kelch domain, which is the substrate recognition domain of LZTR1. And you can see that compared with the strong degradation capacity of the wild type LZTR1, uh, most of these mutants are defective for both uh, degradation of EGFR and the <clears throat> cell. Now, uh, in the last two slides, I will show some uh, uh, preliminary studies that we have uh, recently generated uh, to uh, um, uh, demonstrate the development of peripheral nervous system tumors, including schwannomas, in a new mouse model that we have uh, uh, generated in our lab, in which LZT1 has been deleted in uh, using a GFAP Cree driver together with a, a deletion of the CDK and 2A gene. These mice, as you can see, uh, basically all die, and most of these mice get the peripheral nervous system tumors, including uh, schwannoma-like tumors that, as you can see, display all of the typical features, both histological and uh, uh, marker features of uh, peripheral schwannomas. And as you can see, these tumors have a very pronounced accumulation of uh, AXL and EGFR. Loss of uh, LZT1 as expected the results in massive growth in uh, these uh, cells derived from these mice. And uh, when we looked at the uh, human tumor work that has been done in collaboration with the PTSR P3 in Paris, we can see that LZT1 uh, related schwannomatosis, schwannomas from these patients accumulate very high levels of EGFR and AXL, which is a, a significantly higher level compared with sporadic schwannoma in the absence of LZT1 tumor predisposition. Uh, obviously, the most important uh, question is, uh, is, is uh, the most important conclusion, I guess, of this study is uh, in this slide and this uh, uh, so far, the very strong synergistic activity that we have seen, the very strong and specific synergistic activity that we have seen so far with the use of these two uh, combinatorial uh, inhibitors of EGFR and AXL, namely uh, bemcentinib and osimertinib, you can see that uh, in this uh, bliss synergistic score, the score is very high. Uh, every time we use uh, LZT1 knockout cells, whereas the LZT1 uh, proficient cells are basically uh, resistant. This happens both in the context of mouse astrocytes, in the context of the uh, uh, schwannoma uh, tumor cells from our LZT1 knockout mice, and more importantly, from uh, uh, patient derived LZT1 uh, patient derived organoids in which we see uh, equally uh, uh, significant uh, synergistic activity of uh, the two uh, uh, RTK uh, inhibitor. And this is the last slide that gives me the opportunity to mention that this is mostly the work of a very talented postdoc, Aram Ko, in the lab, uh, who has been uh, generously supported by a fellowship by uh, CTF. Thank you for your attention. So clearly we have something in common here. We discovered this yesterday with uh, uh, Silvia. Uh, she came from a completely different trajectory uh, uh, converging on uh, AXL um, in the context, I guess, of a guided uh, guess towards uh, NF2 uh, alterations. 
Uh, in our case, we identified AXL together with um, EGFR, obviously, in the context of this uh, unbiased uh, LZTR1 uh, search for substrates, for direct substrates to be uh, ubiquitin, uh, uh, ubiquitinated and targeted for degradation by LZTR1. Yes, actually, uh, I think it's, uh, it was very fa fascinating to, to, to realize that, you know, we are coming from different uh, paths and, and actually uh, have now common uh, targets. And, uh, and we were discussing as well, and there are some also questions here from uh, people. Uh, if you found uh, up on of expression or knockdown of uh, your gene, uh, ZTR1, if you found any effect on melin or vice versa. So you want to answer, Sylvia? I want, ask because I, I, I don't know, I haven't been working uh, with this. Uh, okay, so, so I, if, you, our, if you... In our model, we did not, uh, uh, we did not target genetically um, NF2. Uh, in our model, we only target uh, uh, LZTA1. So clearly, uh, our interest here um, was really to study the tumor suppressor function of LZTA1 per se, because uh, obviously this gene is clearly very important in schwannomatosis, but is also very important in many other type of tumors. In fact. The, uh, um, the phenotype uh, of LZT1 germline mutation in humans is extremely diverse. Uh, there are patients who can uh, develop a sporadic GBM in the absence of any other syndromes or any other uh, diseases. Some patients have Noonan syndrome, some patients obviously have schwannomatosis. So clearly this is a gene that can result in multiple type of uh, dysregulated uh, growth capacity. And in our case, we really wanted to understand the direct substrate of LZT1. But I guess uh, what Sylvia studied is the connection with NF2 in particular. And uh, clearly, this means that uh, uh, targeting Excel may actually come from multiple directions in this case. And that particular target might be uh, independently validated in the context of the uh, LZTR1 related schwannomatosis, because there you have both uh, NF2, of course, and uh, LZTR1 at once. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, I think it will be very interesting now to check where we uh, uh, discussed uh, double mutants for melin uh, deficient and. and um, uh, LZ tier one uh, mutants and, and how also how uh, uh, LZ tier one affect melin activity in, in, in general. So to study the, this this as, aspects and whether patients, for example, double mutants would be more more, more uh, responsive to anti and anti EGF receptor inhibitor. Um, yeah, I see one question about the GFAP promoter we used. Indeed, initially we thought about this driver uh, primarily because we were interested to uh, develop a mouse model of LZTR1 mediated uh, brain tumors. But uh, these mice don't get brain tumors. They do get instead the peripheral nervous system tumors, including uh, uh, schwannomas. And, uh, the reason for that is that beside uh, being expressed in the CNS, GFAP is also expressed in immature uh, Schwann cells, as well as a number of other neural crates derive the progenitors uh, in the peripheral nervous system. So the, uh, this is actually what we see also with other type of oncogenic uh, drivers that we express in the GFAP driver setting. And also, uh, there's a question about if we uh, knock down, uh, did knock down of ax receptor uh, and, and, and check uh, pharmacologic studies. What we did, we did the knockdown of axel and uh, Shona Manijon primary cells, and we found this uh, that axel is uh, relevant for increased proliferation survival of the tumor. So it's why it's, it's we will we went on to to investigate and test uh, drugs targeted axel and <clears throat> 
So uh, another question is well, how 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 close we are to clinical trials for for antiretrovirals? Yeah, we are we are actually discussing to to how to to manage, how to plan it, and how to actually uh, or to find the money actually for for these clinical trials. There would be probably phase zero clinical tri trials and after patients, just you know which it would be the faster, faster way, just to have five, six, seven patients and, 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 and try the drug and, and check uh, whether drugs uh, gets into the tumor and, and uh, whether the targets we expected uh, to, to, to decrease, decreasing. So uh, yeah, this, yeah, we are discussing uh, regarding uh, clinical trials, hopefully soon. I think there is a question for you, uh, Silvia, from Christine, uh, about whether the primary schwannoma cells you used uh, from patients of SNS with timing culture. Well, uh, we we are very we are very uh, uh, careful uh, when we handle and, and culture cells. We are not using neither schwannoma or meningioma cells in more than four passages. And yes, we, we, what we observed when uh, sometimes when we culture cells more than like seven, six uh, pathways, uh, the cells st stop proliferating. But we are using uh, cells in, 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 in uh, up to three or maximum fourth passage. Okay, so I think we have a break now and uh, thank you again for uh, listening to our session. Thank you.